Hi, all you wonderful Authors Love Readers listeners. Before we get into this week's show, I wanted to talk a little bit about why I am asking for Patreon donations. Let me tell you, it's really hard for me (laughs) to to ask. As my friends would tell you, I'm not good at asking for help at all. The reason that I set up the Patreon for the Authors Love Readers podcast, it is not for me as an individual author. It's strictly for the podcast. I would love for the podcast to become self-supporting because I've been supporting it to this point. The expenses include having the podcasts edited because you'll be surprised to know we talk longer than than you actually listen. And I have a monthly fee for hosting the files because these are big files. <laughs> and what I would love is to have people donate, you know, a couple dollars a month would be terrific. Two dollars a month would be 50 cents an episode. It would be a sign of support and it would help defray some of these costs. So that would be the way I could keep the podcast going on and on. And I hope you'll consider that. Thank you. Hey, this is Dylan Garvin, the editor for Authors Love Readers podcast. Unfortunately, while recording this episode, we had a little technical difficulties with Deborah's audio. We worked hard to salvage what we could, but unfortunately, we couldn't use all of it. So you may notice that this episode is shorter than the usual episode. Thank you and enjoy. Hi, welcome to this week's Authors Love Readers podcast, where we delve into the stories behind the stories. We're asking authors questions, some of them fun, some of them serious. And from their answers, you're going to learn things you never knew about the people who write the stories you love. My name is Patricia McGlynn. I'm your host and designated question asker. I'm Deborah Hale. I'm author of Love Readers. Now, let's start the show. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Authors Love Readers Podcast. We're so glad to have you here with us this week, and we hope that you are loving the interviews too, and will let the world know (laughs) with a review wherever you happen to listen to us to spread the word. So please consider reviewing Authors Love Readers Podcast. This week, I have Deborah Hale with me. Deborah Hale, I first met pretty sure through doing uh, Harlequin Historical, which is an aspect of my writing that a lot of people don't know about because I've, I've only written two historicals out of 40 mumble mumble <laughs> books, but there was a, a group of people um, writing Harlequin Historicals, terrific group of authors. And then Deborah and I have worked on some, some other projects in author world <laughs> that that I think would bore readers to tears. <laughs> so, but I have great respect for what she has done and how hard she has worked with that. So welcome today, Deborah. Thank you. Tell the readers a little bit about what you write. Well, I've written a number of different kinds of things, um, mostly historical. Some of it has been historical romance. Some of it's been inspirational romance with historical setting. Uh, I've done one um historical fiction novel, and I did a couple of um, other world fantasy novels. So so history is kind of one of the things that ties my stories together. And then usually there's this relationship aspect that, that runs through it too. Now, I didn't know about the fantasy. So your fantasy is set against real history or do you do alternative history or it's it's other worlds some sort of like george r R. martin's game of thrones where it's you know westeros is its whole own world well i got my own little whole world and there's magic involved and and that kind of thing so but but you get to you know i've drawn my own maps and all that kind of thing oh wonderful what's the name of that it's a two book. It was a two book series. Um, the first was uh, the Wizard Horde, and second was Destined Queen. And they were actually I wrote them for um, Harlequin's Luna imprint when when it first came out. What I heard about it was it was something that I always wanted to do, and I contacted my editor and sent her a, a proposal and got a contract for it. And did those two books and and really enjoyed it. Uh, but my my heart was really in historicals, and I didn't write fast enough that I could keep writing with them at the same time. So I kind of went back to historicals. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Can, <laughs> nice of me to warn you, right? Can you explain to the listeners and to readers about writing in a, in a genre that you love, historicals, and yet 
having this non fitting story or stories that that have been tugging at you because you said you'd had those stories kind of there you'd wanted to write that kind can you talk about that well actually fantasies that was the genre that originally made me want to write stories oh. back in high school and university i had you know done some world building and apps and you know created world building kind of things and then it was later when i started writing romance and actually learn about story and how to finish a book and that kind of thing but then when this kind of opportunity came up to possibly write fantasy it was, it was just something that really really appealed to me and as it turned out sort of didn't expect that i would get it get the opportunity i thought oh well i just want to give it a try and see what comes with it and sent the uh, sent my editor a proposal and heard back very quickly and said, yes we want two books it's like oh what? <laughs> so I actually went back to some of the material that I put together in high school because I, I didn't have the time to do all that. I wanted something pretty quickly from me. So I had to go digging through. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm a, 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 not a hoarder, not a hoarder, but a pack, a pack rat. <laughs> That's what my grandma would call it. <laughs> Did you find that it was that writing those books was a different experience in any way from writing your historicals, the historical fiction or historical romance? In a sense that there's sort of less research and I just make up date <laughs> but, but I just had to make sure that it was sort of an internal consistency to things so if I made something up I had to make sure that if I referred back to that again that it was the same thing that I had said I can't you can't just keep <laughs> it's it's like buying for fun and profit you got you got to keep your story straight right but the, the first the first of those books just seemed to flow the second the second one less so <laughs> well that first one had probably been in your head percolating it to some extent yes. or not uh, other for that's right you know for what at least the 5 years since you'd been out of high school well yes <laughs> you know you were talking about you don't have to look up the dates and you you can just you can make things up. I, I always find, though, the problem with that is then I make it up, I get put it down, and then when I am either doing a, a subsequent book that's connected or whatever, I'm thinking, why did I do that? And I am the only one to blame. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't say it's history. I'm stuck with this. It's all me. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your historicals. Do you do um, a particular period in time, a particular place? Well, that's another thing. I I kind of have jumped around a certain amount in, in my historicals. Quite a few of them are regencies. Um, but even amongst regencies, it's not all set in England, in mm. you know, London, and then and that kind of the, the setting usually associated with regencies. Okay, so... Let's uh, let's do some of the the fun questions. Let the readers get to know you better. I'll go right to the real fun and say, do you have any really strong fears, <laughs> and do you use them in books? Oh, I'm I'm still kind of scared of heights, but I, I think that there are a lot of things, not necessarily fears, maybe a bit uh, that that I will work through in books. Well, how about earlier in your life? Did you have things that really got to you? And now you look back at them and think, why was I obsessing about that? Uh, it really used to bother me when things didn't work out the way I anticipated, the way I thought they were going to work out. Because I, I, Maybe that's just kind of a running trade or something that you sort of imagine if you've got something coming up. Mm. And that is something that I just learned to say, you know what? I'm just going to say, right, whatever happens, that's that's me. It's all <laughs> I, it's, I think it's really hard for writers to not have preconceived ideas because our imaginations are, are, are churning all the time. And, That's always, yeah. yeah. And looking, <laughs> ahead, looking ahead at those things. So speaking of imagination, I have my own, my very own peculiar desert island that I make people live on. <laughs> and it has the ability to show movies, but it will only let you show three movies. I, I, you know, it's a weird island. What can I say? So which three movies are you going to watch over and over and over? Okay. Well, if I could only have one, there'd be no question. We, have day. We, have, we watch it every year. So now my husband, myself, my kids, if you get us started with a line of dialogue, <laughs> 15 minutes later, we'll be, we'll be snowboarding Bill Murray or whatever. <laughs> It, it, it gets harder after that. That would definitely be number one. Um, let's see. Probably after that would be While You're Sleeping, Miss Sandra Bullock. Mm. I learned so much from that film about structuring. Yep. It's it's 
classically structured. Yeah. There's also a, there's a scene where she goes to um, the family's house and they have at the dinner. It makes me homesick. <laughs> it's kind of look that you get in a lot of older romance films where it's like, oh, this is the shot of the heroine falling in love. And it really is because she's falling in love with this whole family. Yep. And that's, that's yep. so sad. That's just my yeah. hard time. Ah, uh, oh, number three. That, oh, okay. Number three, toss up between The Princess Bride and Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> well, you know what? They, they make me think of, I... I refer to movies that have a good heart oh <laughs> yeah and i also think there's a um quote by jessica tandy that apparently i'm the only person who's ever heard but because <laughs> i've never been able to find this otherwise it's that she said i swear i heard her say in an interview that uh she wanted to make movies that when you left the theater you were glad to be a member of the human race and i thought that's what i want to do with my books uh, that certainly does sound like she would say. Yeah, if she didn't say it, she should have, right? Yeah. <laughs> me putting words in her mouth? Who, me? <laughs> All right, how about a favorite color? Green. Interesting. I read somewhere that the human eye has more receptors for the color of green than, yeah. than any other. It's, I think it's probably an adaptive trait from living in the jungles and whatever. But yeah, we, we see way more different shades of green than we can of, of a lot of other uh, colors. And so it's has it always been green for you? I think so. Any time I've had an opportunity to paint or paper a bedroom, it's usually always in kind of a, a muted shade of green. I think it's in a restful too. One of our, our reader listeners asks um, about where we get ideas. And it so kindly says our beautiful ideas. Do you get ideas from research? And do you come back once you have the idea you're researching? I don't think too much. My relationship with research has always been a red hot love affair. <laughs> I, I, I like to say, I think it's on Twitter that I said that, that I, I write novels to support my research habit. <laughs> <laughs> what is the biggest thing that most people think they know about especially let's say historical romance that that just isn't so so these are clearly not readers of historical romance sure i i think one of the things and i suppose that this goes for a lot of romance but but definitely i think for historicals is this idea that it's somehow anti-feminist i find that they, the heroines are really strong when um they go through a lot of things and they you know manage to to forge a relationship, to to change their own character, and to help the hero change in ways that that is good for their relationship, and have and expect wonderful sex. <laughs> what's what's, <laughs> what's anti feminist with that? Yeah, good points. Excellent points. If somebody has not read any of your works, where do you think? What which is the best introduction? Do you think to your to your writing? Probably when I agencies, I would think either um, A Gem of Substance or Beauty and Bear, and two of my, probably my most popular agencies, and I, 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 those are, I think those are ones that might hook a reader if like to like some of them. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think the uh, books that other readers have loved is often a good, <laughs> that's a good indication. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. That, yeah. And where can people find out more in general about your books? Uh, I probably the best place is to go to my website, uh, DebraHale.com. That's just realize there are two H's there at the end of Debra at the start of Hale. <laughs> yeah. We will include the URL in the um, show notes. And we will go to the rapid round either ors okay so this is the this uh, i love this part paper plates are best china best china day or night day house decorating or gardening house decorating okay then paint or wallpaper paint hiking boots or cowboy boots hiking boots heels or slippers slippers daisies or roses roses Winter Olympics or Summer Olympics? Winter Olympics. Nail polish or bare nails? Bare nails. Spring or fall? Fall. Ice cream or cake? Ice cream. Cruise or trekking vacation? Cruise. Okay, this is the last one. Grab the best first. 
or save the best for last. Save the best for last. Thank you so much, Deborah. We really appreciate your spending the time with us. For our listeners, we hope you'll come back next week and meet another author, um, Authors Love Readers podcast, and hear about their stories behind the stories. Until then, I wish you a wonderful week of reading. That's the show for this week. Hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for joining Authors Love Readers podcast. Remember, you can always find out more about our guest authors in the show notes, and you can find out more about me at www.patriciamclin.com. You can also send in questions to be asked of future authors at podcast at authorslovereaders.com. Until next week, wishing you lots of happy reading. Bye.